So this August 24th, Betty will have been 93 years old. <laughs> I can't. Wow. And she made it to 91. Mm -hmm. And it really is a testament to devoting your life to pleasure. Betty was a self-avowed hedonist. <laughs> <laughs> she certainly was, absolutely. And a good role model for giving yourself pleasure. Prioritizing pleasure. Yes. He will, will ask me, what is the greatest thing I learned from Betty? And I really feel like I could write a treatise mm -hmm. on everything Betty taught me. Mm -hmm. um, and the way she taught, she just lived. Yes. And that was the workshop, right? She just modeled sex positive behavior, mm -hmm. generosity. And what I learned from Betty, and when I think of her work, I don't think of masturbation. Masturbation is a tool. Um, it's self-love and independent orgasm. It, exactly. I, I, I think that's the greatest gift that I learned from Betty was self-love. And I really didn't expect that going into the workshop. Um, and it wasn't like the flip of a switch. It wasn't immediate, but it just started me on that path. And now I can say I truly loved myself, which would have never happened without body sex. I truly love myself. And what I learned is that the generosity I show myself is the generosity I'm able to show others. So we have it flipped as women. We're always mm -hmm. kind of conditioned to think if I do without, if I suffer, if I put others first, at the end, I'll get a reward and I'll feel great about myself. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. And I agree. We have to fill ourselves up first before we have something to give. It's that old, put your oxygen mask on, mask on first before you help another one. Yeah. And it's okay to have a good time. It's okay to prioritize fun. Yes. You know, Betty was a pampered pooch. Mm -hmm. She loved fine food. She loved fine wine. She lived in Manhattan her entire life. She traveled the world. And if you went out to dinner with Betty and she walked into a room and she didn't like where she was sitting, she would ask to move. Mm -hmm. Even in the little things, she really prioritized herself. And it's not that prioritizing herself took away from anyone else. Being self-full does not mean that you're selfish. And Betty was self-full and not selfish. And because she was self-full, she was able to be present in every moment. Yes. And when I think of the first time we met and I showed up to do a podcast audio interview with her a day early because I was so excited that she had agreed to the interview. And I showed up at her door and she had a, a T-shirt where she had cut the sleeves off and I had Rosie the Riveter holding a Hitachi <laughs> magic wand like that and black uh, bike pants. And as soon as she opened the door, I fell in love. It was like, this is the, the Shiro I've been looking for. And when we sat down, I plugged in my USB port microphones, which was a big deal 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And she asked me a couple of questions. She's like, oh, you're a technical person. Do you know how to use a camera? Or you're a lawyer. And then looked at me and said, you have a quick mind. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time I believe in my life that I was seen, mm -hmm. which is very powerful because as women, I think we aren't seen. Right. So when we're self-full, we can see others. Yes, and give that gift. I find that people that I interact with who are self-full are, are just so much more present and in the moment and available in relationships. Um, and and I, I, in my mind, I always thought that that was the opposite, that, you know, I would have to give to be available, like at sacrifice to myself. And you're right. It is the total opposite. And I'm not sure how or when she mastered it. I've been reading her journals and it was a process. It is a journey. Mm -hmm. um, she was raised to be confident, and independent, but still she had to confront the virginity myth and the beauty myth and the sexual double standard. And I think, you know, what is that that kept her moving forward? And I think it's pleasure as a coping skill, pleasure to connect, to know myself so I can appreciate myself. Yes. 
and then I can appreciate others. Yes. Yeah. One of the reasons that I took my first workshop with you and with Betty Mm -hmm. is Betty was 30 years older than I was when I took my first session. And I wanted a role model. She just seemed so, you know, happy and secure. And I wanted to know how to get that. I wanted to know how to age into that, you know, to be, to live my next 30 years in self-love, in pleasure. Uh, And she certainly was a role model. I'd have to say I got it. And she's still my role model. You know, I think, what would Betty do? (laughs) You know, women have said that in the workshops. They feel like they're not sure if she's a little devil on their shoulder or a little angel. But it's going to like, what would Betty do? Yes, And it gives you permission. Mm -hmm. And whenever we started the workshops and answered, how do you feel about your body and your orgasm? I was always so impressed. It's not easy to be in your mid and late 80s and sit in a room full of women naked with women in their 20s and 30s. And you never saw any competitiveness or jealousy. And she would always start off by saying, well, I don't really look like myself anymore, but I can eat and I can shit. (laughs) I can walk and I can talk and I can have an orgasm. Yes. Mm Mm-hmm. What else do we need, right? Right. Life is full. Life is good. And she maintained that connection with her body and with herself and was able to teach millions of women how to love themselves. Mm -hmm. The ultimate generosity. So happy birthday, Betty. (laughs) Happy birthday, Betty. We miss you. We miss you so much, but I feel you around us, especially when we do the work and we're launching a retreat, a live retreat in September, our first one at Men Law, where we celebrated her 90th birthday. And we're going to do two more in June. And I know she'll be there. I know she will. 